Hello my dear students I hope you all guys are fine in this lecture I will discuss about placental development means how the placenta develops or forms and the structure of placenta at term means how the placenta looks at term so before starting this lecture guys I just first want to say that if you will find my video useful then please please do like to my video and also give your valuable comments and if you are new at my channel or if you're not subscribed to my channel yet then please please kindly subscribe to my channel for getting the regular updates now starting the lecture with the definition of placenta that what is placenta so the human placenta is discoid hemochorial and deciduate now why the human placenta is discoid that is because of its shape as the human placenta is having the disc like shape that's why it is known as discoid human placenta is hemochorial as the word hemo indicates the blood which blood that is maternal blood and the word chorial indicates the chorion so as in the human placenta the maternal blood is in direct contact with the chorion that's why the human placenta is hemochorial human placenta is deciduate now why as while the delivery of the placenta some maternal tissues also shed along with it or some maternal tissues also comes along with it that's why the human placenta is deciduate so it's another definition is the placenta is attached to the uterine wall and it establishes the connection between the mother and the fetus through the umbilical cord so basically the human placenta is a structure which makes the connection between the mother and the fetus through umbilical cord now how the placenta develops so placenta is developed from two sources now what are those two sources first one is fetal component or fetal part and the another one is maternal component or maternal part so the fetal component which is involved in the development of the placenta is chorion frondosum and the maternal component which is involved in the development of the placenta is decidua bacillus so from the chorion frondosum and decidua bacillus the placenta develops i will discuss what is chorion frondosum and decidua bacillus but before that i am going to discuss the process of placental development from beginning so as the implantation is completed on the 11th day what is implantation when the fertilized ovum or blastocyst attaches to the wall of the uterus that is known as implantation and when the blastocyst deeply penetrate into the decidua that is known as interstitial implantation actually the whole process of implantation and what is blastocyst that all things i discussed in my previous video so i think for better understanding you should have to watch my previous video on development of fertilized ovum so when the implantation is completed the blastocyst is surrounded on all the sides by lacunar spaces and trabeculae as you can see in this diagram these are trabeculae and in between these trabeculae these are lacunar spaces so when the trabeculae penetrates deep into the decidua it erodes or damages the maternal arteries as a result these lacunar spaces will be filled with the maternal blood so on the 13th day these trabeculae will develops into the finger like projections and these finger like projections are known as primary stem villi the primary stem villi are having the outer layer of syntetial trophoblast cells while internally it is lined by cytotrophoblast cells and on the 14th day the chorion develops as in my previous video i discussed it in detail that chorion consists of two layers that is the outer layer is of trophoblast cells while the inner layer is mesoderm as you can see here in this diagram this is intra embryonic mesoderm and this is extra embryonic mesoderm and mesoderm and the trophoblast layer is collectively known as chorion and when the chorion develops the primary stem villi are known as chorionic villi and when this mesoderm enters into the chorionic villi these are known as secondary villi and the secondary villi develop on 16th day so here you can see in this diagram these are secondary villi and when the mesoderm differentiates into blood cells and the blood vessels then these are known as tertiary villi so the tertiary villi develop on 21st day after the fertilization so here you can see in the tertiary villi this is syntetic trophoblast layer this is cytotrophoblast layer and these are the blood vessels which supplies the blood to the embryo through body stock here in this diagram you can see this is body stock which will later develops into umbilical cord 
So when the tertiary villi are formed simultaneously or at the same time, the lacunar spaces merges with one another. Means it joins one another. Here you can see these are tertiary villi, and these are lacunar spaces which joins one another, or which are merges with one another. As these trabeculi will develops into tertiary villi, while these lacunar spaces will develops into the intervillous space which will filled with the maternal blood what is the meaning of intervillous space that is the space between the villi so when it merges with one another it forms the multilocular receptacle now what is the meaning of multilocular receptacle means the small cavities or compartments are formed which are hollow in nature and contain the maternal blood and it will become the future intervillous space as i already said and it will lined by syntheticio trophoblast cells so here you can see these are intervillous spaces which are developed from lacunar spaces and which are lined by syntheticio trophoblast cells in the yellow color you can see these are syntheticio trophoblast cells so here you can see in this diagram in the green color this is the decidua which is the inner lining of the uterine cavity during pregnancy so here the decidua where the embryo is attached that is known as decidua bacillus and here the placenta will develops and the decidua which covers the growing embryo that is known as decidua capsularis and the decidua which lines the uterine cavity that is known as decidua parietalis so as the formation of placenta develops at 6th week so at the beginning of the 6th week due to the growing embryo the decidua capsularis start becoming thin and it exerts pressure over the villi as villi are present on all the sides of the embryo so due to that pressure the villi become atrophied means the villi will reduce in size and extent as a result the chorion will converts into chorion levi what is the meaning of chorion levi that is the smooth part of chorion without chorionic villi and these villi and lacunar spaces which are overlying the decidua capsularis will completely degenerated or eradicated at the end of the fourth month as you can see in this diagram when the embryo grows the decidua capsularis will become thin and it exerts a pressure over the villi which are present here and due to that pressure the growth of villi stopped or ceased as a result the chorion will converts into chorion levi but the villi which are present over the decidua bacillus these are continue to grow and expand and when it continues to grow and expand it is known as chorion frondosum which is the fetal component of placenta as the chorion frondosum is involved in the development of placenta so i hope it is clear what is chorion frondosum and what is decidua bacillus so the villi which overlying the decidua bacillus or which are present over the decidua bacillus are continue to grow and expand and that structure is known as chorion frondosum while in the case of decidua bacillus the growth and proliferation occurs what is the meaning of proliferation that is the multiplication of the cells which results in the formation of discrete placenta what is the meaning of discrete that means the separate and well defined placenta so the development of the placenta completed at 12th week as the development of the placenta started at Sixth week. So after the twelfth week, the circumference of the placenta increases, but its thickness will not increases after twelve weeks. As you can see in this diagram, you are aware about villi and about the intervillous spaces. So these villi connects the chorionic plate with the basal plate. What is the meaning of chorionic plate? Means the fetal side of the placenta. And what is the meaning of basal plate? Means the maternal side of the placenta. so these are spiral arteries which supplies the blood to the decidua and to the placenta now from where these spiral arteries arises these are actually arise from arcuate artery which is present in the myometrium so the branches arises from the arcuate arteries which supplies the blood to the decidua bacillus as well as to the placenta and these arteries are known as spiral arteries and during the pregnancy the remodeling of spiral arteries occur what is the meaning of remodeling means the modification as the cytotrophoblast cells replaces the vascular endothelial as well as the smooth muscles as a result the less resistance will be offered by spiral arteries to the blood as a result the more blood will flows to the 
placenta. So here you can see these are cytotrophoblast cells which will later on lined by syntetotrophoblast cells and then these will known as anchoring villi. Here you can see these are anchoring villi. Now what is the function of these anchoring villi? The anchoring villi actually attaches the placenta with the decidua bacillus. So the cytotrophoblast cells which are present inside the villi, those are known as villus cytotrophoblast cells while the cytotrophoblast cells which are lying outside the villi, those are known as extra villus cytotrophoblast cells. So there are two types of extra villus cytotrophoblast cells. So here you can see the cytotrophoblast cells are invading into the spiral arteries and these are known as intravascular extra villus cytotrophoblast cells and here you can see the cytotrophoblast cells invaded into the decidua bacillus and these are known as interstitial extra villus cytotrophoblast cells here you can see this is the fully developed placenta at term these are fetal blood vessels which supplies the blood to the fetus through umbilical cord and these are maternal blood vessels this is the chorionic plate which means this is the fetal side of the placenta and this is the basal plate which means this is the maternal side of the placenta and these are intravillous spaces which contains the maternal blood so these are cotyledons there are 15 to 20 cotyledons present in the placenta which are limited or restricted by fissures or grooves these are fissures or grooves like this and these fissures or grooves are known as placental septum so here you can see this is the layer of syntetiotrophoblast cells and above the syntetiotrophoblast layer this layer is of cytotrophoblast cells so the layer of cytotrophoblast cells is known as outer cytotrophoblast shell and the area above the area or reason above the outer cytotrophoblast shell is known as trophosphere. So after the development of placenta now I am going to discuss the placenta at term that how the placenta looks at term. So it's cross anatomy. What is the meaning of cross anatomy? It means the whole structure of the placenta. So at term the placenta is almost circular disc as I already said that placenta is having the disc like shape that's why it is known as discoid and the diameter of the placenta is 15 to 20 centimeter at term so its thickness is 2.5 centimeter at its center as the thickness is reduced towards its edges so the thickness is thins off towards the edges so the feel of the placenta at term is spongy what is the meaning of spongy means the feel is soft or like a sponge and the weight of the placenta is 500 gram that is the average weight of placenta at term and the weight of the placenta is one sixth of the weight of the baby at term as the average weight of the baby is 3000 gram so the weight of the placenta is one sixth of the weight of the baby placenta occupies the 30 percent of the uterine wall so 30 percent of the wall of the uterus is occupied by the placenta the placenta is having two surfaces such as the fetal surface and the maternal surface so i will discuss both these surfaces one by one so starting with the fetal surface so before discussing the fetal surface once you should have to see this diagram at the margins of the placenta the chorionic plate and the basal plate fuses or it joins and it will continue with the chorion levi what is the chorion levi that is the soft part of the chorion without chorionic villi and here you can see this is amnion which lines the placenta and the uterine cavity so here you can see this is the fetal surface of the placenta so fetal surface of the placenta is covered by smooth and glistening amnion what is the meaning of smooth it means the amnion is having the even or regular area plus it is glistening what is the meaning of glistening it means the amnion is shining with umbilical cord attached at or near its center so at the fetal surface the umbilical cord is either attached at the center or near the center so here in the diagram you can see the branches of the umbilical vessels are visible below the amnion as these branches are radiating or extending from the umbilical cord so the amnion can be peeled off or it can be separated from the underlying chorion so the amnion which lines the placenta can be separated from chorion but it cannot be separated at the insertion of 
cord. So at the area where the umbilical cord is inserted into the fetal surface, at that area the amnion cannot be separated from chorion. So at term, four fifth of the placenta is of fetal origin. It means the eighty percent of placenta is made from fetal portion or fetal part, or we can say the fetal component. Next is the maternal surface of placenta and here this is the diagram of the maternal surface of the placenta. So the maternal surface is rough and spongy. What is the meaning of rough? It means the maternal surface is having an irregular area but its feel is soft or like a sponge and the color of the maternal surface is dull red color due to the maternal blood. So while the delivery of the placenta, some parts or some remnants of the decidua bacillus also delivers along with the placenta which is visible during the examination of placenta. So here you can see in the diagram these are cotyledons. So approximately 15 to 20 cotyledons are present at the maternal surface which are limited by or which are restricted by fissures. So here you can see these are fissures or grooves which are occupied by decidual septum. And in the diagram you can see the small greyish spots are visible. Now why these greyish spots are present? at the maternal surface due to the deposition of calcium in the degenerated area. As due to the aging of the placenta at term, the calcium is deposited at the maternal surface due to which the small greyish spots are present. But these spots are not having any clinical significance or importance. Next is the maternal portion. So one fifth of the total placenta is made up from the maternal portion. It means the 20% of the placenta is made up from the maternal portion. And the maternal portion which is involved in the placenta that is decidua bacillus and the blood which is present in the intravillous space. Next are the margins of placenta which I already discussed that at peripheral margins the basal plate fused with the chorionic plate and it will continuous with the chorion levae and amnion. Next is the attachment of the placenta. So placenta is usually or normally attached to the upper part of the body of the uterus near the fundus either to the anterior wall or to the posterior wall of the uterus. Next is the anchoring villus and decidua capsularis helps in the effective attachment. As I already discussed the anchoring villus which attaches the placenta with the decidua bacillus and the decidua capsularis the decidua which lines the growing embryo is known as decidua capsularis and it helps in the effective attachment of the placenta to the decidua bacillus. So that's all about the placental development and the placenta at term. I hope you all guys are clear about this topic but still my dear students if you have any kind of query then please ask me in the comment section. I will definitely answer your queries.